Chip stocks on the move this afternoon. You can see all four of the big names trading to the downside. Now, Apple CEO Tim Cook announcing that his company is going to be buying chips made in the U.S. He's referring specifically to chips being made in Arizona, where Taiwan Semiconductor is announcing plans to build a second chip plant in the state. President Biden will be there, too, to talk about bringing more chip production to the U.S. His comments are expected to get underway in just about a half an hour. We want to bring in Angelo Zeno, CFRA Research Senior Equity Analyst. Angelo, it's great to have you. So you were out with a new note today saying that this investment from TSMC is a positive but doesn't alleviate supply chain risks. Why? Yes. So listen, I think um, when you kind of think about, um, you know, the broader semiconductor industry, the 800-pound gorilla in the room, is the fact, and the biggest risk in the industry is the fact that there um, is too much capacity, um, foundry capacity in in Taiwan, and you know there is significantly increasing risk that of a potential China attack or takeover of Taiwan here in the future. So um, there's this need to you know significantly increase capacity outside of Taiwan in, in terms of the the chip making side of things and into other you know Western type markets like a um, like Europe as well as the US. And um, when you kind of look um, at this investment here, you know, $40 billion, you know, an increase from the 12 billion, definitely a positive. Um, You've got more capacity coming online here in the US over the next couple of years. But we question whether or not it's the right capacity, at least on the Taiwan semi side of things, right? Um, They're on in 2024, they're going to be developing four nanometer chips. Um, the second factory um, in 2026 will be on three nanometers, techn- uh, three nanometer technology. But when you kind of look at um, you know what Apple is u- utilizing today, right? In terms of the the iPhone 14 Pros, they're utilizing four, four nanometers already. In terms of 2023, in terms of the 15, we expect them to go on three nanometers. So this is essentially going to be trailing edge technology for them, whereas the industry really needs. Um, more kind of leading edge technology, we think, in some of these Western markets. Cook also saying this is an incredibly significant moment. It sounds like you don't entirely agree with that assessment. How significant is it for the U.S. semiconductor industry moving forward? I feel listen, I think it's important. Again, it's, it's something where we are getting more capacity here in the U.S. It's needed, um, you know, clearly. And um, you're seeing it not only from Taiwan Semi, you're seeing it from Intel, and Intel is going to be critically important because they are shifting towards a foundry-type business model, and um, you know you're going to get more of that foundry capacity here in the U.S. But again, um, you know we don't think you're necessarily looking at the the right kind of leading-edge technology that you need. And and the the fact of the matter is, when you look at Taiwan Semi, right, they control about you know more than 50% of the foundry revenue here um, on a global basis in 2022 over 90% of the advanced chip production. So that's really the key, at least on our end of things. And as you kind of look towards the 2024 and 2026 plans, I don't know if you're necessarily going to see that, um, you know, supply chain diversification on the advanced technology side of things. Again, it's good to have. Over time, I think you get there, um, but probably not something you see here over the next three years or so. That's interesting. So Angela, are we seeing something that we could be reliant on shipments here from outside the U.S. then when it comes to chips, because we were initially thinking that this would be a huge move here for U.S. chip production, that we wouldn't be as reliant on some of the overseas makers. So that, in fact, may be more of an eight to 10 year type timeline. So, you know, as far as we get, I mean, listen, I think when you kind of think about the broader supply chain industry, right, I mean, it's extremely complex. We're talking about hundreds of chips that go into uh, potentially an iPhone here, right? Um, and, you know, they're, they're relying on tons of different geographic regions, whether we're talking about the memory side of things, whether you're talking about kind of the ASIC um, chip that you're talking about that's currently being produced um, out in Taiwan, um, eventually kind of all this stuff currently being, you know, uh, put together out in China. But, um, you know, maybe to your point, um, you're going to need to rely on Taiwan, I think, a lot longer than many people want them to. Um, but again, I think um, having that additional capacity in the U.S. is definitely a good thing. And maybe potentially, you know, Taiwan continues to, you know, to revisit their uh, production capacity as they look out towards 2026. If you look at the 2024 plan here, um, originally it was supposed to be for five nanometer technology. They currently are now looking at four nanometer technology. So, I, you know, I think there's also the possibility that over time you could potentially see some sort of shift depending on what the client need out there is. And of course, Apple is going to have a lot of say in that.
Semi's having a tough day, as Shauna pointed out uh, earlier on in the program. Why and what's the catalyst as we move forward? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think we're kind of well underway in, in terms of a correction that likely started in Q2 and in, into Q3. I mean, we're, we're talking about a number, of, we're talking about essentially rolling recessions that are taking place across a host of end markets, right? Started in a number of the consumer driven markets, PCs, gaming, smartphones, kind of trickled into industrials. The only area that remains strong in our view continues to be um, autos as well as the Apple supply chain, which we think you know, both areas will eventually roll over before we see a bottoming process take place, you know, in early Q1, uh, Q2 time, time frame. So if there is a catalyst, it is the fact that we kind of see, I've seen a lot of damage done here. Um, the estimates for 2023 likely look a bit too high to us. We're looking for revenue down about 5 to 10 percent next year. Um, street probably down now low single digit percentage. So we've got a little bit more work to do here, but we do think a lot of dam damage on the stock perspective side of things. And already with some of the estimate revisions we've seen, especially in, after Q3 earnings season, has kind of been well reflected in a lot of these names. We'll call it overall some cautious optimism from Angelo Zeno. Good to see you, okay. sir. Thank you.